Hello, it is Tuesday, October 25th, 2022. I'm Chris Primo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It's a Tuesday puzzle today, so hopefully we have a relatively solvable puzzle today, a themed puzzle, and I can see we have some circled cells in the grid, so I do enjoy those, and I'm looking forward to that. And it's a uh, it's a double debut. We have two debuts for the price of one, and that price is nothing. So... Uh, in any case, this free edition of the Daily Solve um, has been brought to us by Ryan Eaves, Connor O'Neill, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster, the invaluable Timothy Mark, and the indomitable Shoalmaster. So thank you so much to the five of them, benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, for bringing us this edition, this double debut edition of the Daily Solve. And um, if you'd like to join their ranks as benefactors and get the Daily Solve Let's Check the Crosses mug, you can find that at patreon.com slash daily solve, where you can um, also become a patron at any level and get access to all of the bonus videos that have gone up on the channel to date, as well as the new ones that go up each week. And thank you to everybody who has done that. Thank you to everybody who is a benefactor, and thank you to everybody who is a patron at any level. I do very much appreciate it. And... Um, uh, and that's that, I suppose. So yes, you can subscribe to the um, channel on YouTube. Thank you to everybody who's done that. Um, do tell a friend. Thank you to everybody who has spread the word at any point in the past. And why not like a video if you uh, find yourself so inclined? All right, let's get on to the puzzle. As noted, this is a Tuesday-themed puzzle constructed by Ashley Silvera and Nick Shepard. And uh, two debuts two debuts in this in this puzzle. And it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start solving and see what these circles are all about. It's black on one side and white on the other in Othello. Um, a tile? An Othello tile? Don't they flip over? I can't, I don't know. I think I maybe played Othello once when I was young. I can't really remember how it works. It's a board game. Um, practice swimming. Practice swimming. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe this isn't tile, but rather disc. I think this exact thing, strangely enough, has come up before in the puzzle in the last couple of weeks, this uh, ambiguity between disc and tile, because practice swimming could be do laps. That's why I changed my mind about that. So a snack item that might be twisted or dunked that surely is an Oreo, one of the classic, classic New York Times answers. And it's been it's been proven wrong by by viewers of this series, the sort of oft-repeated myth that uh, in order to include Oreo as an answer in the crossword, you must use a unique clue. That's been disproven because people have found some repeats. So I don't know if this is a unique <laughs> clue or not. It's not kind of that might be twisted or dunked. Let's keep looking. Lisa with the 1994 number one hit, Stay, I Missed You. I can't bring this particular song to mind, but with that year and that name and this cross, I'm assuming it's Lisa Loeb. So inner ear, cob, right? So that could be an ear of corn, say, and the cob is on the interior of the, the um, you know, bit of the plant that we hold and eat. So I think that's what's going on there. And the question mark is indicating that we're meant to read this in a punny sort of way. So we're not referring to the inner ear anatomically in the human body, but rather, in this case, as I said, ear, an ear of corn or similar. Okay, like some t-shirt graphics, they could be iron-on, iron-on t-shirt graphics. Do people still do that? I remember that was, that used to be a big thing. Um, iron-on sort of decals that you could affix to clothing. Okay, T or F. So this could be true or false on a test. Those could be answers to a test. And of course, because this is an or clue, we're only referring to T or F. Either one of those is an answer, a singular answer. So we're um, abbreviating, well, this does have an S at the end as a plural would, but in this case, it's just the S from answer. Okay, oh, and uh, the EG there and the also the abbreviated nature of T and F indicate that the answer will also be abbreviated. All right, line from Dick and Jane readers. So I think I think this is referring to the children's very, very early ages children's books with lines like C spot run, high spot, C spot run, run spot run, etc. I don't remember exactly how they go, but something like that. Children's, very young age children's books. Soda can opener could be a pop top, I think is what you'd call that. And if you're snuck up, you stuck up, I'm sorry, you could be a snobby 
sort of person. Uh, lift on a ski slope could be a T-bar, so um, the uh, uh, way to climb a, a mountain on the ski slopes, a T-bar, um, so named for the shape, and, and you grab on and uh, go up the slope. Okay, key above caps lock. Well, I can glance down on my keyboard and see that that's the tab key. I probably could have inferred that myself, but uh, there's a keyboard in front of me, and it's almost impossible to to not just take a look. Here, blank dab do Oh, I guess this isn't pop top. Pop tab, maybe? Because this looks like yabba dabba do, which was uh, the catchphrase uh, yelled by uh, Fred Flintstone from the Flintstones, the cartoon series. So, hmm, pop tab. Because this T bar, I'm pretty sure, is correct. So, you know, I could see pop cap, maybe, but. That's not so much a can. That would be more of a bottle. Um, yeah, I guess it's pop tab. That's weird. I don't really know that phrasing, but let's keep looking. Business review site. Yelp is used to review businesses on the internet. And fly past to something by. Not sure. What about this one? Meticulous to a fault. You could be anal, anal retentive. So very you know, extremely overly conscious of detail. A scratchy voice could be a rasp, what I sometimes have on this series. Um, casino buy-in the ante, buy-in to, um, you know, poker game, for instance. And here we have fountain pen, so I'm simply type of pen. City in Normandy. Is it Cayenne? Cayenne? I don't exactly know how to pronounce this. I'm sorry, I need to look this up. But that is a French city. What about this? Refly past race by and improves to meet a challenge or a hint to this puzzle circled letters. Oh, right. St uh, improves to meet a challenge. Steps up one's game. Are these going to be names of games? Yes, they are, because this looks like Scrabble. Right. So we can spell Scrabble out in the class. So that makes, that makes opening with Othello kind of a nice little tip of the hat to the theme. It's not part of the theme, it's just an ordinary clue. Uh, but we are we are tipping the hat to the board game theme there. That's that's a nice detail. All right, word before firma or incognita, terra firma or terra incognita. So there we go, two common phrases dealing with um, you know, land. And blank but a scratch, tis but a scratch was um, the Black Knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, and then post OR locale, post operating room locale. Okay, well, yeah, ICU, the intensive care unit. There we go, fair enough. And a green prefix could be eco for ecological, of course. All right, big name in electric toothbrushes. Um, Sonic something? I know that a lot of, you see a lot of electric toothbrushes advertise themselves as having some sort of sonic thing, I guess, because of vibrations. I'm not, I don't actually know very much about it, to be honest, but I think it's probably sonic something. More ooh-inducing, ickier. So not just icky, but even more ooh-inducing, even more icky. Let's the tears flow. If one lets the tears flow, one cries. And a belief system could be a creed or a credo, maybe? Not sure which of those I think this is. What about this? Like some volleyballs and hair, you could have spiked hair and you could spike a volleyball. You know, the sort of downward hit over the net. Scorch on a grill. You could sear meat, for instance, or vegetables on a grill. And this is using the um, US meaning of grill. Um, whereas a grill in, um, in the UK would refer to, the, to what in the US is called a broiler. And then What's called a grill in the U.S. is called a barbecue in the U.K. So I'm only bringing that up because it was this whole thing I saw on Twitter recently about, about that, about some someone in the U.S. being confused about that. Anyway, board and dairy cow. Elsie is sort of a common... Is this... Does this have anything to do with the fire of Chicago? The cow whose tail kind of knocked over a lantern or something and started the fire? Or is that totally unrelated and that's just nothing? 
I think that might be unrelated. I'm not sure. Sorry. Um, but, but anyway, LC is a name that does seem to be associated with cows frequently. So this looks like risk. Sorry, this this upward um, diagonally spelled board game, the board game of risk. So there we go. We have another one of those. And a ballet dip could be a plie. There we go. So um, that came up in the crossword about a week ago. And here we have wasn't well. One wasn't well, one ailed. One was ailing. And Cuba, por ejemplo, would be an isle, an isla, I suppose. Boy, I'm, I'm being challenged. My pronunciation is being repeatedly challenged today, and I don't think I'm up to the task. Uh, a butt could be one's, one's butt, one's rear. There we go, straightforward enough. And anti-pest spray raid, I think, is an anti, anti-pest anti spray raid. I'm pretty sure that's right. I can picture a raid bottle in my mind. Magical writing, as in Dungeons and Dragons. Well, I assume this is a rune, so, you know, referencing sort of Norse runes and things like that. I don't know if these are specifically in Dungeons and Dragons, but, I mean, presumably it seems perfectly plausible that they would be. So, magical, I think this must just be, I think this must be rune. Um, you know, which are often used to indicate sort of mysticism and magic and things like that in a kind of general way. All right. To harden to something is to inure. You could inure yourself to it. Harden yourself to a particular hardship. Oh, so here we have Sonicare. Okay, so that that, that sounds like a, a perfectly plausible electric toothbrush brand name, Sonicare. And doze off is to nod off. Stock launches, in brief, are IPOs, are initial public offerings. And battery end could be what an anode. And then does that work with this? Yes, chimichurri or hollandaise. Either one of those is a sauce. Chimichurri is a very sort of fresh green herbal sauce. And then hollandaise is a, you know, the eggy, creamy sauce used for um, ex Benedict. Okay, they're hard to get out of. Ruts? Get out, hard to get out of a rut, maybe? It seems plausible, but not necessarily the only possibility. What about this? Like a weedy garden, perhaps. Un, uh, unkempt, untended, untended. <laughs> that was right on the, at the sort of, it's so funny when you have that one. That was sort of right on the forefront of my brain, but I couldn't quite get it out. That was strange. Anyway, untended, I think is probably the answer. Oh, this is probably chess. Let's just try it and see. Um, our third game, trailhead displays. Could be maps, maybe. You could have a map of the, the trailhead of a hiking trail. And Toledo Minor Leaguer, named for a marsh bird. Oof. Well, I don't know the Toledo Minor Leaguer. Oh, maybe this is a team name rather than a person. Right, because a, per a person wouldn't be named after a marsh bird. They might have, I mean, probably not anyway. I suppose they could be. But anyway, is it the mud hens, maybe? Toledo mud hens? I don't know. But um, that sounds like a marsh bird to me. Holder of keys, phone, and IDs. A purse, one's purse, maybe. Things that thinkers think of. Ideas, straightforwardly enough, I suppose. Go over as plans. To go over again as plans, sorry. To rehash the plans, maybe? Jigsaw item, yes. A piece in a jigsaw, and that's nice. Another game. We have another sort of game played on a tabletop, even if it's, you wouldn't necessarily call it Jigsaw Puzzle a board game per se, but it's a, it's a game played with physical pieces at home. Go over again, well, it's a, or maybe not a game, but you know what I mean, an activity. Go over again as planned. So right, uh, word before 51 or rug area 51 or an area rug. And educational promos in brief could be PSAs, public service announcements. And then finally, meeting informally is a sesh. We could write, okay, we could have a, a quick um, ideas sesh, I guess you could sort of irritatingly say. Um, and then go over again as plans is rehash those plans. Okay, testimony under oath. Oh, what is testimony under oath? Um, oh, I don't know offhand. Oh, that's annoying. Loss leader. The letter L, simply, I think. I think that's all that is. Henna, e.g., is die. Um, 
you, you know, you'll, you'll often people, uh, you'll, you'll see it applied to hands frequently. Uh, Blank Culbertson, member of the Contract Bridge Hall of Fame. Okay, so this is this is once again referring to a game you, you would you might play at home. Uh, bridge, contract bridge, card game. But I don't think I know who this is. Ely, I guess, probably? E-L-Y? Um, Mac maker. Apple computer makes Mac, Macintosh computers. And in progress could be, what, a foot maybe? The game is a foot, actually. <laughs> you know, quite, quite often attributed to Sherlock Holmes, so... Maybe, maybe another nod to games, if this is indeed the answer. Rocks, yeah. Rocks Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl's band. Dave Grohl, formerly of Nirvana. And then the Fuzz could be the Police or the Popo, maybe. And, oh, Testimony Under Oath is a deposition. There we go. All right. Needed a bit of a bit of prodding to get me on my way to that one. A little slip could be an oopsie. And I think the way that li little is formatted is contracted, rather, to Lil here is what indicates we're going to be used sort of using childish language or casual language, however you'd like to interpret that. Uh, in this case, oopsie. So whining and dining say could be wooing somebody, at, uh, you know, romantically uh, courting them, I guess. Takes responsibility for a mistake. Oh, sorry, look, I just noticed this game here is Monopoly. So we're just going to go ahead and put that in. So anyway, takes responsibility for a mistake is owns it or owns up. I guess, hmm, which of those is more appropriate? Takes responsibility. So it includes the for a mistake part. So he owned up, he took responsibility for a mistake. He owned, he owned it, he took responsibility for a mistake. Oh, those both kind of work for me. I guess I'll move on. Fellow informally could be a gent, short for gentleman, of course. Periods longer than eras, well, as we discussed the other day in this very series of eons, longer periods of time than eras, which I sort of knew in a general sense before, but I don't know that I was aware with the specific aware of the specific named eons, so that was interesting. Such as the Miocene, country between Thailand and Vietnam, uh, Laos, and a place to park would be a lot, parking lot. Or a car park and luxury hotel chain would be Omni is a luxury hotel chain takes responsibility for mistakes so it is owns it it was that one and to try the patience of somebody is to test that person so there we go let's come up here road gunk or when doubled tooth gunk oh that's funny that's a clever little clue so uh, road gunk I suppose is tar um, used to pave roads and then when doubled tooth gunk so uh, tartar you, you often hear your dentist uh, you know, refer to that when cleaning your mouth or inspecting it. When, or sorry, how breakfast cereal is usually packaged um, in a box, I suppose, or a bag, actually. Hmm. Yeah, it really could, it really is both. <laughs> it's first packaged in a bag, usually, and then that bag placed in a cardboard box, usually. So actually, I think either one of those is equally plausible, although X doesn't look great here. Oh, no, no, it is. It is indeed the X. It is in a box because... So once again, I actually can't, I have to admit, I don't actually know this, can't bring this song to mind, but there, you know, there is a band of that era in, in excess. So that's probably the answer to this clue. I uh, need you tonight, band 1987. I should have read it aloud. And now I have, so an aura, someone's aura could be their vibe, their sort of general aura that they project. Not worth having as an argument. It could be a moot argument, not worth having. So what was this? Key Death's School, right. This is the Virginia Military Institution or something? Hmm. I think this... I thought this came... I think this came up recently, actually, in the crossword. And Key Death's is a play on cadets. Um, is it VMI? And then not worth having the argument is moot and heron varieties are uh, egrets. So these are wading birds with long legs. And... There we go. That was the crossword. There we have it. All right. So we had a nice, simple theme. Um, didn't need any sort of direct in uh, uh, direct engagement with the theme, I don't think. Did we even have a revealer? I can't remember. Um, let's see. I don't think we 
did, in fact. I I don't think we had, so when I say that, what I mean is we didn't, oh no, we did, we did, sorry, sorry, I completely forgot. <laughs> you must have been wondering what I was thinking just now. Yes, we did indeed. We had steps up one's game. And of course, you could solve that simply using the clue and proves to meet a challenge, which, which, which I did, but obviously it also refers to the puzzles circled letters, which are stepping up one's game. So we're going step by step up the games of Scrabble, Chess, Risk, and Monopoly. And there you go. And you don't need to have understood the theme in order to fill in those circled cells. But of course, if you did happen to spot that, they do help you get some, get a few extra cells here and there early before you'd otherwise have crossed them. So there we go. A nice, solid double debut from uh, Ashley Silvera and Nick Shepard with a nice, gentle theme for a Tuesday, which is what exactly what we want. And I hope you enjoyed it. That was the puzzle for today. And now let's move on to a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. We'll read some clues from yesterday's puzzle, or rather some explanations about them. And there were a few in this case. So uh, Rahul Shah confirms that regarding the athletic brand with a cougar in its logo, uh, the Puma, their names were the same animals. So this was not a pointed comment by the setter. So thank you very much for that, Rahul Shah. I appreciate it. Oh, Dragon Traces uh, further explains, Puma, Cougar, Mountain Lion, Catamount, and Panther are all names for the same American, both North and South American, Big Cat. So there we go. Interesting. And uh, also confirms, 64 down, Snap, Crackle, and Pop are gnomes, not elves. They are characters from Kellogg's Rice Krispies cereal. The Keebler elves are unconnected. Okay. So thank you for that. Wasn't sure about the sort of, I don't know, cryptozoological... Uh, nature of snap crackle and pop and i suppose not elves no relation to the keebler elves nothing to do with that at all and also makes a good point here that's in 65 across regarding diva this usage of diva originally applied to operatic leading ladies was entirely complimentary from italian appropriately enough and meaning goddess divo god in italian was also used but not to the same extent the negative connotations are fairly recent and sexist. There's no comparable negative term applied to demanding bossy men in the theater, although there are, they are at least as common, I'm sure. Devo doesn't do it. Such men are more likely to be thought of as self-assured or take charge. We still tend to admire these kinds of traits in men while denigrating them in women. And I think that's a, an utterly fair point. Um, so thank you for pointing that out. And uh, there's a film actually called... Um, Il Divo, that I saw, I saw it in theaters when it came out. It must have been almost 15 years ago, probably. And it was about a um, former Italian prime minister, I guess, and Andriotti. Anyway, it was called Il Divo because he was essentially this sort of godlike figure. It was a fictionalized film. And there are all sorts of very unsavory things um, purported to have been... Um, you know, carried out at his behest, but are, have not really necessarily been sufficiently publicly proven, but were, were depicted in this film. Anyway, uh, Il Divo. So there's a, there's a usage of the male uh, ver version of it. I don't know why that came to mind. Anyway, Andrew Posnikoff explains, dodos were a type of passerine pigeon that ended up on an isolated island with no terrestrial predators, which then adapted to be the largest terrestrial herbivores of the island. Without predators, they had no need to adapt to predators coming after their nests or having fight or flight responses to potential predators. Flying was not needed as well, since the island was so isolated, so flying to other islands wasn't very efficient. It was better to be adapted to the trees of the island. Um, has some more explanation here. And anyway, what the, the upshot of this is the, that isolation meant that these creatures didn't run from humans, so were easily collected um, and uh, made sailors think they were very dumb, very unintelligent. And uh, not that they simply didn't have the instincts to deal with large predators coming utterly out of context. And so they were very easily scooped up by sailors to replenish stocks on great journeys, on long journeys with great ease. Uh, so there we have it, the fa sad fate of the dodo. Not so not so unintelligent, just unequipped for the world to suddenly change overnight. I think we can all relate to that a little bit. Uh, Nicole Hicks points out that stents are used to open or to hold open passageways in the body, more frequently blood vessels, but airway stents are also important. So that's what I referred to as airway stents. But um, as Nicole points out, uh, blood vessel stents would be, I suppose, more common. 
And uh, I think that was all of the correcting from yesterday's puzzle. So thank you to everybody who left a comment. Thank you to you for watching and for making it to the end of the video. And of course, I will be back tomorrow for the uh, Wednesday puzzle. Maybe just a little bit of a step up in difficulty. We'll have to see. Join me and find out. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Tuesday. Take care. Mm -hmm.